Bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, my soul, and all that's in within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, for he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Janiah. Good morning, Sister Butler. God bless you. And Brother Butler, God bless you. She K, praise the Lord. Ulyssa, God bless you. Bailey, my friend. Good morning, Deacon Grant. Good morning, Sister Nixon. God bless you, Elder and Mother Bailey. Praise the Lord, Mother Street. God bless you, Sister Dykes. Good morning, Sister Stimson. God bless you, and Deacon Stimson. Good morning, Lydia. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Doggett. God bless you, and Elder Doggett. Praise the Lord. Bishop Desinet Alday and Lady Alday. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Mother Street. Good morning. God, Mother Morris, God bless you and Minister Morris and your family. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Roberts. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jan. God bless you and your family. Praise the Lord, Mother Holman. God bless you. God bless you and thank you to you and Kathy. God bless you, Pastor Crooms. Praise the Lord to you and Lady Crooms. God bless you, Deacon Briggs. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Sister Walker. Good morning, Mother Meadows. Good morning, Sister Minor. God bless you, Sister Kinlock. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Brother and Sister Stokes and the Stokes family. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Haywood and Sister Haywood. God bless you, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Deacon Davis. God bless you. We're praying for Mother Davis and the loss of her brother and the family. Good morning. God bless you, Alan. How are you, my nephew? Thank you. It was great seeing you yesterday. Good morning, Angela. God bless you, Sister Davis. Good morning, Natasha. Wonderful seeing you, my niece. God bless you, Glenda. Praise the Lord to you. Good morning, Sister Howard. God bless you. Good morning. Jerron, good morning, Mother Davis. God bless you, Deacon and Mother Wilson. Praise the Lord. Sister Felix, God bless you, Sister Malloy. Good morning, Pastor Morton. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Sister Johnson Walker. God bless you and Deacon Walker. Good morning, Sister Glean. Good morning, Sister. Hey, cousin, God bless you, Joy. Good morning to you and your family. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Sister Mary. God bless you, Robin. Good morning to you, Elder Smith. Good morning, Sean. Well, Good morning and God bless you, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And I continue to see the manifestation of God through the function of prayer. I can't tell you, hallelujah, I can't tell you how much much of a blessing it is to be able to pray and to see God work. And yes, God is still dealing with unexpected favor. I'm so excited and I thank God for just God doing things. You know, my mother passed away um, uh, in 2009. So it's been 
um, 13 years since my mother left us to go home and be with, be with the Lord. And it was always her desire to leave an inheritance for my sisters and myself. And um, she always talked to me about this land that her family had um, in South Carolina, um, which is where her, her biological father was from. And she would talk about this land and talk about this land. And, and we knew the land was there, um, but really didn't expect anything from the property, from the land, just knew it was there. And in the about two years ago, in the middle of the pandemic, we started receiving correspondence from an attorney. And by court order, the land was consolidated and the land was sold. And on Saturday, I got a letter from the lawyer and I have been receiving letters and letters all the time and not really paying attention and on and looking at them later on. But yesterday morning, after after right after prayer, the Lord said, open that letter. And when I opened the letter, a check fell out, saints, a check fell out and it was a nice check. And I'm just so emotional and excited because my mother prayed for. And and even though it was 13 years later, was able to leave an inheritance to her children. And so I'm just excited and grateful because that was completely unexpected. But God has provided unexpected favor to my sisters and myself and our entire family on my mother's side. So I'm just thanking God today that he answers prayer. Sometimes the prayer takes a while. Sometimes the prayer takes a while to come through. But guess what? God knows how to answer prayer. So I'm just celebrating Jesus. I'm celebrating because yesterday was First Lady's Day. And I want to thank everybody everywhere who blessed and sold and seeded into my lovely wife yesterday. She was just so blessed. And we just had a wonderful fellowship with family and friends and saints from everywhere that came not only in the morning service, but came to our evening dinner gathering and how the Lord just really, really blessed. And her heart has been blessed. And she she wants to say thank you to everybody, everybody in our morning prayer family who thought enough to just send something to be a blessing to her. So we appreciate it. She appreciates it. I appreciate it. And we love all of you. As always, if you have a prayer request, if you're on Facebook, please place it right there in the chat or you can inbox um, Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you are on Instagram, you can place it in the chat on Instagram, or you can um, direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody who's on the conference call, and thank God for all of our conference call listeners, to everybody who's on um, YouTube, and anybody can text in their prayer request to 336-567-5358. Again, that number is 336 336- Five six seven five three five eight, and you can text in that prayer request. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them, and most of all, we are standing in faith with you that God is going to do what we know the Lord is able to do. I want you to join me once again in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter three. We want to read verses one through six, and we are continuing and concluding by the grace of God our discussion concerning the church at Sardis. So Revelation chapter number three, verses one through six. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast the name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even as Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I want to continue and conclude by the grace of God the thought, the walking dead. The walking dead. We've been talking about the church at Sardis 
um, because the church of Sardis um, is somewhat of a anomaly. We'll call it an anomaly. Um, in that it was proclaiming and perpetrating, to some degree, the um, life of a living church, a church that was vital, that was connected with God, versus um, what they actually were, which Jesus said, you, has to, you have a reputation, you have a name that you live, but you are really dead. You're really dead. And, you know, the, the elements of death is the inability to hear, to see, to um, think, to reason, all of these. You know, you can be clinically dead, meaning that your body is dead. You can be brain dead in that you might still have respiration and you might still have um, some level of heartbeat, but your brain, there's no brain wave, there's no activity. And, and they can do brain scans and they'll tell your family, well, you know, the brain is dead. There's nothing there and there's no life there. So disconnect the life support. And all of these are realities that people have faced at one point or another. But the saddest death, the saddest death, my friend, is to be spiritually dead, to be disconnected with God. Because in the Greek, the word death means separation. That's why physical death is the separation of the spirit from the body. When your spirit leaves your body, you die. That's death. Um, spiritual death is to be separated from God, meaning that you're breathing, you're walking around, you're enjoying what you think is life. But in reality, you are spiritually dead. You can't hear from God. You can't see God working. God is not moving within you. Spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. The worst death, and this is the death that um, Jesus is warning about in this text, is to be eternally dead. Meaning you are eternally separated from God. Eternally separated from God. You know, a lot of times when we talk about being lost, we only talk about the fire and the brimstone and the worm never dying and the lake of fire. We talk about that. But I believe, I believe that the worst part of eternal death is going to be to be eternally separated from God. Because even if you're unsaved, you get to experience God. You get to experience God. You can go to church and you can feel God's presence. You can go to church and be lifted by the music or lifted by the preaching. But to be eternally separated means there will be no more God in your arena. There will be no more God in your life. No more God. Imagine a place where God has turned his back. And, and, and the pathway to that is spiritual death. If you don't have a life with God, you're going to face eternal death. And that was the warning that he was trying to give to Sardis. Jesus tells them to remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard. Remember the Holy Ghost. Remember the word of God. Remember the things that you've gotten from God and hold fast to those things and repent. Because as we said earlier, it was the sin that was killing. It was the sin that was killing Sardis. Sardis was dying from an infection called sin. Sardis was dying from an ailment called sin and that sin was that sin was killing this church it was killing the believers in the church there were a few if you look at verse 4 that a few names in Sardis that had not defiled their garments they were trying by the grace of God to live holy to live right to walk right they were trying to do what the Lord wanted them to do and God said if they walk worthy hallelujah they shall walk with me in white in other words if they keep themselves undefiled, if they keep themselves separated, unspotted by sin, unspotted by the world. Saints, I don't know how to say this any clearer, but it matters how we live. We have to live like people who have been born again. We have to live like people that have the DNA of God, the Holy Spirit in our lives, so that we reflect his righteousness and we reflect his holiness. I, I know we hear so 
many things and we see so many things of people who run in our churches and run in our circles and they don't seem to live anything. They act any kind of way, behave any kind of way and will pick up a microphone and preach and teach and sing and try to prophesy and do all of these things. But saints, it matters that we live holy. It matters that we live for God because Sardis died from sin. Oh God, Sardis died from sin. Sardis died from unrighteousness. Sardis died, oh my God, because they refused to hear and live by the word of God. But there were a few people that had not defiled their garments. There were a few people, and he promises them that they would walk with him in white, for they are worthy. Now, let me just be clear about this. They're not worthy because they did it. They're not worthy because of their willpower. They're not worthy because of their, their, their tenacity. They're worthy because they were washed in the blood and they were counted worthy. And then they kept their garments unspotted by sin. God did this. Don't ever get in your mind that if you're living right, living holy, is something that you're doing. It's God living through us. If I'm living saved, if I'm walking saved, if I'm living by the word, I can't boast in it. It's an act of grace. His grace is keeping me daily. His grace is sustaining me daily. His grace is guiding me in every area of my life. So if I'm living holy, I ought to be thanking God for it. If I'm living saved, I ought to be celebrating God's grace and God's keeping power in my life. And he says, they're going to walk before me. Why? Because they're worthy. Because they're worthy. I counted them worthy. I washed them in the blood. And they kept their garments unspotted. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. They're going to be clothed. White is a symbol of purity. White is a symbol of holiness. White is a symbol of godliness. And here I am. The Bible says we're going to stand with him in those white garments to signify that we have been unspotted by the world. But look at what the Bible says, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. Saints, it is so important that we remain connected with Jesus Christ until the end because you want your name in that book of life. You can go to the end of this book. I believe it's Revelations 21 or 20. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. All right. But the Bible says the dead will stand small and great before God. This is what we call judgment day. This is the great white throne. And the Bible says the books shall be open, plural, and the book shall be open. There's one book called the Lamb's Book of Life. And the Bible says whoever's name is not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they shall be cast in the lake of fire. The Lamb's Book of Life is the list of the saved people. And I want to be on that list. Oh my God, I want to be on that list. Because that determines if I make it or not. I need to be on that list. You need to be on that list. And the only way that you're on that list is to be born again, born of the water, born of the spirit. You've got to be born again and you've got to live and hold on to the end. It is not enough. I'm going to say this. It's not enough that you got saved. Are you saved today? Oh, Shatama. It's not enough that you were saved. Are you saved right now? Are you born again? Are you ready right now? And, and, and you just can't judge your readiness by your church response, your jump, your shout. Does your life say that you're ready? Because the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Does your life say you're ready? Does your life say you're born again? Does your life say that you're ready for the rapture? Does your life say you're ready to reign with God? Does your life say that you're qualified for the white garment? Does your life say, oh my God, that you are written in the Lamb's book of life? That's what Jesus is saying. Those who overcome, those who overcome, if you overcome, oh God, there's a lot of tests. There's a lot of trials. There's a lot of temptation that gets in the way. Hallelujah. That tries to dissuade us, that tries to move us out of the will and the plan of God. But can you overcome? Can you overcome? everything that might be in front of you so you can stand before Jesus and hear him say, well done. Hear him say, well done. Saints, this is a critical, critical, critical letter to Sardis. 
that could be written to any one of us don't just have a reputation for being alive, but have the reality that I'm alive in Christ Jesus. He is living inside of me. Hallelujah. I've got the Holy Ghost. Ah, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. You need enough power in you that should you die before the rapture and you're sleeping in a grave, that your body can be regenerated and that spirit rejoined to that body and you be caught up to meet him. If you're walking around when Jesus comes, do you have enough power in you that your body can be translated from mortal to immortality. Saints, I need you to know that you're saved. We need to know. I need to know. All of us need to know that we are alive in Christ Jesus because it's the lively people. It's the spiritually connected people. It's the people who are born again. It's the people who are found ready that will find their name in the book of life. Oh, Shatama, I want to be in that book, saints. I I want to be on that list. I want to know that I'm ready to meet Jesus Christ when he comes again. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's overcome. Whatever's trying to kill you, you destroy it. Whatever's trying to stop you, you stop it. And you be that overcomer that will stand in that white robe, that will stand in that white garment, that will stand and know that your name is written in the book of life. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your kindness to us. Lord, I thank you just for this day. For this is the day, God, that you have made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in this day. Lord, I thank you for every blessing you have bestowed upon us. I thank you for life, and I thank you for favor, and I thank you, God, for just waking up this morning in my right mind, able to get out of the bed, able to prepare myself to join this great assembly of believers, my God, from all over the world. God, you've brought us together once again to thank you and to worship you and to be connected with each other and with you. And I thank you, God, right now. And I'm asking you in the name of Yishanama, in the name of Jesus, to fill this prayer room with your presence. Fill this prayer room with your glory. Fill this prayer room, my God, with your your spirit and Lord release unexpected favor whether we're joining by conference call or whether we're joining by Facebook or Instagram however we've come together today God I want you to minister to our needs right now I want you to touch every heart I want you to touch every mind I want you to strengthen every soul God in the name of Jesus Christ to minister to the needs of your sons and daughters today your people need you right now your people need you where earnestly crying out to you because we need your presence, your power, your deliverance, and your help today. Lord, I want you to bless everybody that's on this prayer line right now. I want you to minister to every soul and mind in the name of Jesus and to help us now by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, I'm praying, oh God, for everybody on the prayer list this morning. I want you to remember them in a special way. God, remember Today, Crystal Spencer and her family. Remember the Refuge Church of Sandston. Remember, my God, Stephen Holloman today. Remember Deacon James Grant. Remember Greater Refuge Temple of New York City. Remember Faith Refuge of Harrisburg. Remember the Community Church of Astoria. Remember, my God, Shiloh Baptist Church. Remember Shiloh Apostolic Temple Cathedral. God, remember, my God, every congregation that's represented in prayer today. Remember Macedonia. Remember St. 
St. John's. Today, every congregation, God, stretch out your hand and remember them in a powerful way because we know that you're able. God, I'm praying today that you would remember, my God, Greater Victory Temple, that you would remember, my God, hallelujah, Glory Chapel Baptist Church. Remember Juliet Johnson and Christian and Travis. Remember Miranda Davis and Portia Rawls today. Remember Denise today, God. Remember the New Hope Baptist Church of Atlantic City. We're praying, oh God, for Dr. John Howard today. God, remember Dominique Tabernacle. Oh God, hallelujah in Trinidad. And remember Pastor and Lady Chetram. Remember my God, Bishop and Mother Joseph and the work they're doing there. All the congregations, all the pastors, all the saints of God. Lord, strengthen them now. Remember the people of God in Jamaica. Remember the people of God in the Dominican Republic. Remember the people of God, my God, in St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Grenada. Lord, stretch in the Bahamas, my God. Remember them in a special way and minister to their needs today, God. Everybody on this prayer line, we're praying for them right now. God, I'm praying for the unsaved, unsaved family, unsaved friends, unsaved people, my God, attending churches. God, that you would save, plant repentance in their heart. My God, it helped cause them to believe and let them be born of the water and of the spirit. My God, in the name of Jesus Christ, anybody on this line that wants the Holy Ghost, God, I want you to baptize them in the name of Jesus and fill them with the Holy Ghost right now. My God, let your power be revealed today. Remember everybody on the prayer list, everybody in the chat, everybody sent by messenger or text or email. God, remember the unspoken request and God bring deliverance now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying today, my God, for the sick everywhere. God, remember Caprice. Remember Joe. Remember Cynthia Baisden. Remember Maribel. Alexis Smith today. Miracle Destiny. Remember Tammy Garnett. Remember Missionary Jesse Brisbane. Remember Deacon Columbus Bugs today. Remember Kimberly Curry. Remember Pastor and Lady Winston. God, remember Deacon Perry Adams today. Deacon Jerome Wilson. Deacon Christian. Oh God, Harris. Chris Harrison today. God, remember Elder Robert Tall. Everybody. Remember my God, Celinda and Eddie. Remember Bishop D today. Remember James. Remember Lucy Garner. Remember Sylvia Matthews. Alif Powell today. Clyde Stanton. Remember my God, Missionary Gail Leah. Remember my cousin, Gloria Austin today. Remember Mother Virginia Brown. Mother Barbara Davis. God, strengthen now. In the name of Jesus Christ, God strengthen Jimmy Mangrum, God, Gladys Perry, Sister Bobby Mott today, everybody, Duchess's parents, God, Lord, send healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, wherever they are. Remember Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell, God, remember Mother Carol Coleman, remember Sister Shakaya Pope today, Bishop, my God, Irving Taylor, Bishop Mac Vincent, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Apostle Leroy Joseph today. Apostle, my God, Charles Williams. Apostle Sylvester Norwood. God, with your healing touch, touch now in the name of Jesus Christ because we know that you are a healer. Remember. My God, Brother Wiggins, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. God, remember Dr. Haywood, Sister Haywood, Dr. Haywood's mother. Remember Mother Jill, Mother Pride. My God, stretch out your hand. Oh, Shandi Arabasia, Tanaye. Oh, God, stretch out your hand. My God of healing right now. Remember Mother Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. My God, touch because we know that you are a healer today. My God, minister, Lord, to every need. Minister to every condition. Minister Minister to every situation, God. Remember, my God, hallelujah, Pastor Carr, Minister Carr. Remember, my God, in your name, hallelujah, Elder Tyson, Elder Smith, Lord. God, remember them in a special way. God, bring your healing virtue to Mother Foster, Henry J., Brother Cliff. God, remember Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons today. Lord, send your healing virtue to Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. Lord, send your healing right now to Marlette today, to Maurice today, to Tony, to Dennis. God. Lord, send your healing power to Kimberly in the name of Jesus and heal because we know that you're able. And Tony today, everybody on the line, anybody watching that's sick, Lord, touch their bodies now. Remember Missionary Domingo. Remember Deacon Grant today. And send your healing right now in Jesus' name. God, go into hospitals, go into rehab centers, nursing homes, go into the cancer ward, the COVID ward, the ICU unit, the dialysis unit, and 
and God bring healing because you're the bomb in Gilead. God, I'm praying today for grieving people everywhere. God, I lift up Sister Jackie Poole who lost her mother. I lift up Takesha Hill who lost her father. God, I'm praying today for the family of Tyree Nichols. Oh God, give them comfort and justice. Lord, I'm praying for Sister Rebecca Carr and her family. I'm praying for Laura Kennedy. I'm praying for the Jackson Perry family, for the Wells family, for the family of Beatrice Knowles. God, remember the Rose family today. God, remember the Morris and the Carney families. God, remember the Allen family. Everybody that's grieving everywhere, God, give them comfort. Remember, oh God, the Myers family now. God, everybody grieving everywhere. God, look on Lady Andrea Maxwell and the Maxwell family. Dr. Phyllis Carter and the Carter family. God, look on Bishop Michael Fields Shekinah and the Fields Green family. God, Mother Ida Harrell and the Harrell family. Mother Jacqueline Grant and the Grant family. God, look on them and comfort them. Comfort the Groover family today. Comfort the Kramer family. Comfort the Blunt family, the Hargrove family. God, everybody everywhere that's grieving, God, send them help today. Remember the Bonhams, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family today. Remember the Meadows family. Remember the Moyer family, the Perkins family right now. God, I'm praying for your grace to be upon, my God, the Dockery family. God, look on Sister Pam, my God, her mother and her sisters, God, and give them comfort. God, I'm praying today that you would strengthen everybody. Oh, Everybody grieving everywhere. God, give them your comfort. In the name of Jesus, God, strengthen them. Remember, my God, hallelujah, everybody. Remember Anita and the Brown Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean, Melvin and Street families. Remember the Ransom family, God, yet lost yet another aunt, God, but comfort them now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying that you would strengthen the Jackson family, the Ned family, the Green family, my God, the Newkirk family, and give them the comfort of your spirit. Remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. Remember Shauna Monique and the Gary Porter family. God, I'm praying today that you would strengthen every family everywhere that's grieving. God, help them now. Oh God, remember my God, the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Field family. God, remember my God, hallelujah, the Winninghams, the Bankses, the Middletons, the Taylors, God, and help them. God, I pray today for the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs. God, I'm praying for Lady Manning today. I'm praying for the Matherins. I'm praying for the Briggs family, the Taylors, the Phillips, the Josephs. God, look on the Davises today. Look on my God. Hallelujah. The Allens, the Caldwells. God, send your grace today. My God, to the Hazes, the Moors. God, remember in a special way, God, the Harbisons, the Austins. Oh God, the Adams family. And God, send your grace in the name of Jesus Christ to every grieving widow, widower, child, parent, sibling, loved one. God, give comfort that only your spirit can provide. Lord, I'm praying today that you remember the body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. I'm praying that you remember every bishop and elder, every first lady, all the pastors, children, mothers, and missionaries, ministers, and deacons. My God, remember them. My in a special way. Look on the young people in the church, God, and give them grace today. Look on musicians, singers, and psalmists. God, the entire body of Christ today. I pray pray your grace to be upon the people that you would strengthen today that you would help today that you would provide mercy and grace today in the name of Jesus Christ God send your help to the church help us to remain oh God undefiled help us to keep our name in the Lamb's book of life help us God to be ready help us to be alive spiritually in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for first responders essential workers firemen policemen EMTs I pray for all school employees and all students everywhere. God, I'm praying today that you remember everybody that helps another person in private duty, in hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, hospice centers, clinics, banks, stores. God, wherever they are working from home, God, cover and protect them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, keep us safe, Lord. So many infections, so many diseases, but Lord, you can cover us and you can protect us. And God, anybody that's sick, you can heal them. So heal now now in the name of Jesus, Lord, and as you're healing sicknesses and disease and surgeries, God, heal this troubled land. Heal this land in turmoil, in the Middle East, in the Ukraine, across the United States, all over the world. God, heal the land. Remember the, oh God, the families of the victims of the earthquake, oh God, yesterday. God, heal the land from sin. Heal the land from violence. Heal the land from jealousy, from
from hatred, from racism, from sexism, from injustice, and let the church be the light of the world. Hallelujah. And the salt of the earth. God, I pray today that you remember everybody. Lord, as we go forth today, keep us under your precious blood. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Somebody give God praise right now. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my declaration for today. Lord, keep my name in the book of life. Lord, keep my name in the book of life. Hallelujah. It matters. Somebody said, sung a song years ago. It's important to me that I'm saved. So, Lord, keep my name in that book of life. Don't let me do anything that will cause you to blot out my name. Keep me alive spiritually. Keep me full of the Holy Ghost. Keep me walking in the word and in the truth. Keep me living by the word. Keep me abiding in you, God. Keep me praying daily. Keep me focused spiritually. Keep me examining myself and repenting. But Lord, keep my name, my God, in the book of life. Keep my name in the book of life. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Monday is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. You can go back and watch the Sunday school. Um, Deacon Rousen taught a great lesson in Sunday school yesterday, and we had a powerful worship at Refuge Temple as we celebrated First Lady, but we had a powerful worship, great singing, great word. The Lord blessed us. So go back and watch that service. It's on Facebook and it's on YouTube and you can follow that service in Jesus name. You can also stay connected to our podcast, Google podcast, Apple podcast, SoundCloud and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can access it. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 8.30 a.m. 8.30 a.m. is our radio broadcast on GregoryGospel.com. GregoryGospel.com and we thank you for your support. I want to thank everybody that sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts are so important. They help us to do the things that we need to do and we thank you for your giving and we appreciate it. Once again, Lady Davis and I thank you so much for sharing so much love with her on this weekend. You were such a blessing. We thank God people gave from everywhere and we thank you for your giving and we love you dearly. Hallelujah. But if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also, hallelujah, send it electronically. If you have electronic giving, our website is www.refugetemplenc.com. Refuge Temple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com. You can give on the donate page. Our Givelify app is available. If you have Givelify, just search for Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church to know you're in the right place and make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, hallelujah. Our Cash App is dollar sign one refuge, dollar sign one refuge, and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving. But the greatest blessing that you provide for us, the greatest blessing you provide for us is just simply being in prayer each day. I got a special treat for you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody. I love you. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you, and we appreciate everything that everyone did, but we are so happy and so grateful to the Morning Prayer family, and we just thank God for all of you that join us each day, so keep coming, keep praying, keep telling other people about prayer, and as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my dad, pray for my sisters, pray for our, my, our nieces, our nephews, my in-laws, our entire family, just hold us up in prayer, pray for Refuge Temple that God 
God would continue to bless us because he is blessing us and pray for one another that God's grace and favor might be upon our lives and that we might walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. God bless you and keep you. Lord, keep our names in his book so that we are found, hallelujah, with him and that we are never separated from the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful day, my brothers and sisters. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom.